I remember walking down to the end of my street having to catch the bus and it being a short bus. The first label I was given was that I was neurologically impaired. Then after that, I was uh, placed completely in the special education. I remember immediately feeling like my life had changed. I had to walk into the building and go to a classroom that was all the way at the end of the hallway. I was also conscious that I was in a segregated setting. Everything that, I, that spoke to me about my experience said that I was lesser than everyone else. It just began to just sort of work away at my self-esteem. I very quickly began to think of myself as being stupid. My name is Lederick Horn. I am a poet, a speaker, and an advocate, and I have learning and attention issues that affect my ability to spell, to read, as well as do calculations. I remember sitting in the living room, my mother trying to teach me the alphabet, and me trying to convince her vigorously that I knew what the alphabet was, and I would sing the alphabet song. And I said, there, that's the alphabet. It was a sound to me. And, and I remember her taking a legal pad writing a symbol on the pad in you know, big dark letters, turning it to me and saying, what letter is this? And I had no idea. She said, you do not know the alphabet. The first word that I learned to spell on my own was fresh. And the only reason I was able to spell the word fresh is because there was a song on the radio at the time and the hook was F-R-E-S-H, fresh, 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 uh, that's fresh. It used this mnemonic of rhyme and rhythm and my brain locked onto it, right? Every other way that everyone else had tried to get me to spell a word was just like paper and lists and just sort of cram it in. But then these MCs showed up on the radio and gave me this little gift. By the time I got to first grade, it was clear that I was not able to perform as well as the other students. I ended up getting tested and evaluated. I'm a part of the first generation to pass through what we now refer to as special education. We're coming out of the 70s, we're coming out of the disability rights movement, and you know, special education was still a relatively new thing. So a lot of these labels were, you know, people were trying to figure them out. And if I was in a different district, maybe I would have been called dyslexic. I never caught up with reading in high school. I wasn't getting a lot of support. It was just like one special ed class after another. The closer I got to graduation, the more I had to, to, to the more I began to think about what life was gonna be like for me as an adult. The winter of my junior year of high school, facing senior year, facing graduation, I just got filled with a lot of fear and a lot of depression. I needed to just pause and reevaluate who I was. One of the things that I noticed early on was that the vast majority of the folks who were in special ed were young black boys, people of color, right? I began to get very aware of what it meant to be a person of color, a black man in America. And it was almost at the same time that I was wrestling with a lot of these self-esteem issues associated with being in special ed and having a disability. I remember trying to read Einstein's theory of relativity and not understanding any of the math, but understanding enough of it where I realized that point of view was important and that a big part of what I needed to do was to shift the point of view that I had about who I was as a student, about what my value was in a larger society. I came out of that really dark place with just this understanding and this deeply held belief that I was not flawed, that I wasn't broken, that I wasn't a mistake. Um, and also realizing that I had a great mind and that I could have a future. I remember rolling up in my next IEP meeting and just kind of telling the team, I'm going to college. You know, like, let's figure out how to make that work. What changed my life when I went to college was that I was a part of a a support program specifically designed to support students with learning and attention issues. I'd been, been in special ed for many, many years, surrounded by people with, with learning and attention issues and other kinds of disabilities, but nobody talked about it. It was like a dirty secret. I showed up on campus the first day for an orientation and they were like, no, we're going to talk about being LD. We're going to talk about learning and attention issues. And we spent days just talking about it. It was just this open conversation, and we were laughing. We were joking about some of the things that were embarrassing. Also, having a, a counselor, she sat me down and she just walked me through all my documentation and explained to me what all that stuff meant, right? And I remember being proud to hear things like, 
in all these tests, I you know scored really well, and it was clear that I was you know I was smart and talented and all these sort of things. And I remember Susan, my counselor Susan, turning to me and saying, "Stop worrying about spelling. Just write. Write whatever you want." And then we'll figure the spelling and the grammar, we'll figure that out down the line. I began staying up all night writing. I remember having all these papers and walking into Susan's office and saying, Susan, I think I might be a poet. And in the evenings, I would go to open mics and I would perform. And then I got connected to this, this community of artists. I got known as a writer. <laughs> I, was a, I was a poet with a learning disability. I was a poet that couldn't spell. Back in time, you could find cats like me snacking on knowledge-filled fruits in the Garden of Eden. But instead, I made my bed in a garden state on the east coast of a country that is mine because my ancestors helped build it with blood, sweat, and tears. Their daily fears still be my everyday reality. Never got caught up in that emancipation or you free now fallacy because I too have been systematically institutionalized to rely on everything. And I do mean everything except for myself. I realize that you're not alone, right? Like I went through school feeling a lot of isolation and what really made the difference to me was being able to connect with people who had similar minds to mine. The other piece of advice that I have for, for young people is just the power of understanding how your mind works, right? And so I dare you to judge yourselves by a different standard, to lift as you climb, and to fight like gladiators to become master and commander of your own beautiful minds. But above all else, I dare you to dream.